right, guys. So back in town from Jordan, and I'll get to that in a little bit because we had a long car ride back to Labrada. But wanted to bring y'all here to Mega Mass in Houston uh, with my man Leo here. Appreciate you having us out. Um, Leo has a bunch of pieces that I've been looking for for a long time, including a Body Masters T bar, a bunch of Flex Loveridge stuff, and then. He actually has his own brand, Mega Mass, and he's got some really cool pieces. I'm actually standing behind, like, a, uh, in front of, I guess, like a bodybuilder-sized true squat. And then, you know, looking looking down the line, there's a lot of stuff I want to play with. So who knows, might take some Mega Mass home to Labrata Gym, too. But, uh, yeah, wanted to show y'all, you know, us just checking out his place, you know, playing on some of the equipment. And then when we head back up to Labrata, we've gotten a lot of requests for it. We'll actually do, like, a little gym tour, show y'all what actually I'll have in there. So, yeah, let's get started. What are your favorite pieces that you make? I made, I like the leverage draw. The lever draw? I made the two sides are more stable and heavy weight. And the incline, you can do adjustable super incline with a slightly incline. Okay, so you like your incline in this row the most? The, yeah. These are the ones to play on? That's cool, because on the original flex leverage, it's all, yeah. not, it's not unilateral like that, right? After long term use, it's gonna be crooked. Kind of yeah. And that's been my experience. That's why I was so excited that yours is all so mint the flex stuff is you know people beat the living hell out of them especially when they're in public gyms and while they're built to last they're not built This one, that one. Unfortunately, I don't think my body was made to use flex leverage stuff. That's cool. The chain driven. <laughs> they called them dinosaurs. It's It's like a museum that you can actually play in. I know someone's gonna get offended by me saying that because I still use these and train on them, but there are better options now. I like to put my hand over here. here. Okay, and this is how you rack it? Like, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure on my knees. <laughs> 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 But no, yeah, I'd love to get these two in the gym. These are awesome pieces. Looking forward to having your stuff, man. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. But that Body Masters T-bar, that pull down in that row are all exciting. Chris and I just left. We are uh, about to get on the highway to head to Labrata. Gonna do a uh, full gym tour for the YouTube today. Figure people would like to see that. They're always asking. For those of you that don't know, well, I guess we'll start from right here. The uh, Labrada Gym is actually at Labrada HQ. We have a warehouse here on the north side of Houston. If you know Houston, we're at 249 in the Beltway. Anything that Labrada makes at least touches down here before it goes back out to wherever it will go around the world. Um, this is all outbound RTDs and, you know, warehouse goes back. Uh, we've been very fortunate to have grown at the rate we have the last couple of years. You know, this space is supposed to last us for a while, but we're actually already at the point where we're about to break ground on a separate warehouse. It'll just be strictly, you know, product warehousing only. Uh, this one's got warehouse plus gym plus actual offices. So, yeah, business is booming and, you know, we're very thankful for that. But, you know, this is my favorite part 
of the building. And obviously it's the gym. Um, been getting a lot of requests for, you know, tours of the gym and, you know, some of the events we have coming up, like, you know, posing clinics and, you know, seminars. And I'm actually probably going to be doing some, you know, educational camps at some point this year. Wanted to give y'all, you know, a tour of the gym and what we have going on here. So over here, so we have, you know, full cardio here. In addition to me and, you know, my friends and all the other athletes that we have training out of here, you know, the gym's regularly in used by all the Labrada employees. So, you know, have plenty of cardio stuff here, stretching area. I'm very big on, you know, spending 15, 20 minutes before I train doing, you know, prehab, if you'll call it, you know, just taking my joints through the range of motion they'll be using that day and uh, just making sure everything feels right. First up is, you know, the upper body rack, if you will. Um, you know, this is the one that we keep set up for primarily upper body stuff, obviously, just set us the upper body rack. The other rack has like one of the semi-permanently attached monoliths and, you know, safety straps and everything for squatting. So, you know, we have the space to do it. And like I said, we have enough people in here. We definitely wanted to have two racks. All of the racks and all of the benches are from Elite FTS. All of the bars, um, you know, like I said, while we were at Mega Mass, big time on supporting the hometown crowd. Uh, in this case, the home state crowd. Uh, all the bars in the gym, you know, the normal power bars, the deadlift bars, the squat bars, anything that we could get from them is from them, them being Texas Power Bar. Um, you know, I've been training on their bars since I got started. My high school actually had them. Um, you know, I can't say enough good things about their bars, so. And I guess we'll start dumbbells. So we got the dumbbells from Intec. They're the solid steel guys um they're not coated so they do get a nice little like rusty patina but yeah so we have them from five all the way up to 200. i like these dumbbells a lot um especially the uh, bigger ones the handles a little fatter than a normal dumbbell i feel it like distributes the weight a little better and feels good in your hand how many times can you push those 200s man it's been a while since we've tried. If I had to throw a number on it right now, I'd probably say I could do them like six or seven times. Definitely shooting to be uh, playing with them by the end of this off-season period again. The first row of stuff is all uh, pressing implements and a Smith machine. Um, this guy, Arsenal Flat, he's sideways right now because he's, uh, he's getting sold or traded. I like the piece. It just drops off too much and you have to put like a million plates on it to make it heavy enough and all about not doing that. Um, next up on this line, Nautilus Flat. This is, you know, one of my favorite flat presses that you can possibly use. And I have to give a shout out to Ben, Ben Chow, my coach. This was actually a wedding gift. He drove it down the weekend of my wedding and we uh, unloaded it and used it that weekend. And uh, yeah, been using it ever since. Um, coming down the line, big um, proponent of the Prime stuff. We have a bunch of their pieces, but some of my favorites are the presses they make. So the incline, and then the shoulder press. I'm always trying to, you know, have the most resistance when the muscles longest typically. Um, so I'm able to really do that. Coming down the line, we have a hammer shoulder press and a hammer incline. If I want to be honest with you, these pieces get most of their uses like rehab devices. The weight trees are actually perfect, perfect heights for traps and, and mid back and low back. That's what they get used for, but they're going to be going um, out of here soon. I believe this is actually going to go to Lee's garage, the incline, and then we're going to sell the shoulder press to make room. Uh, we're going to get some of the Atlantis presses. I want the incline and the flat. Uh, last on this row is Cybex Smith machine. Very solid, doesn't have any play and it stays solid with weight on it. You know, newer Smiths, whenever you get them loaded, you know, four, five, six plates on there, they start getting pretty, you know, wonky. Pretty much have trained my rear delts exclusively on this piece for the last two years. Um, you know, some chest supported dumbbell swings, but other than that, I really enjoy, you know, the angle this hits at. Something that, you know, makes so much sense to me, but so many people didn't do it right is the fact that this is angled like that instead of straight up, because when you're doing rear delts, you really do want to be into it and leaned into it, and you can't put your face through a bar, so it's like bad or. You know, you're having to be here, which is not how you want to actually be training your rear delt. It's like shoulder impingement fly instead of a rear delt fly that way. So, yeah, really enjoy the fact that they made it anatomically correct. Y'all have made me so aware of my ums and 
um, at the end of the days <laughs> and things like that. So yeah, I'm trying. Thanks for bullying me into trying to bullying me into having better grammar. Prime lateral have done these and then the cable variation you've seen me do for literally 100% of my isolated uh, delt work for the last two years. It's wider than a normal uh, side lateral machine, which if you're a bigger guy, you'll know what I mean when I say that. Um, like all the prime pieces, you can really adjust where the resistance rolls on and drops off at. And then something I like about it is the stack actually gets heavy enough to not have to gym pin a shit ton of weight to it. This is one of my favorite hammer rows. I know a lot of people use a lot of the different hammer rows. A lot of them are really incorrect in terms of how they load the resistance profile. This one, it doesn't really have the, it doesn't have a terrible resistance profile, but it also has, you know, the diverging pattern, which I really like, especially being a wider guy. It is one machine that I can use, you know, both sides at the same time and not feel like it's super duper wonky. Next up. Prime row, um, whenever we selected the equipment that we wanted from Prime, uh, we placed like a big order with them and you know, could have gotten anything that we wanted. Uh, elected not to get the extreme row, elected to get this guy. Uh, it's a decision that I stand by and like. So yeah, Prime row, and this was a recent find. I was excited about this one. It even came in our colors. It was black and red when we bought it, but the original Magnum Dinosaur. Was really stoked to pick this one up. Came out of uh, someone's garage. Shout out to them for taking such good care of it. Next up, the Arsenal Humbler. If you've used this machine before, you know why it's called the Humbler. If you haven't used this machine, it's called the Humbler because, you know, a top set on this thing for me is like three 25s on each side, not plates, 25s. It's always funny to me, especially like when a gym first gets one of these, if you sit there and watch people put it on, like they'll put like a plate aside on and then like almost get like slung shut off of it when they unrack it. So great T-bar, super heavy T-bar though. My mom always rags on me whenever she comes up to the gym and she's like, why is there a blue machine in here? I was like, cause I like the machine. And that's the color they had it in when I got it. Um, Pendulum Row, Rogers Athletic, really enjoy their equipment. We have their hip press too. Uh, I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't want their squat pro. Really love this row. Um, it's very versatile. You know, you really can smoke your upper back, really can smoke your rear delts with it, and then you really can smoke your lower lats with it. Uh, this is another piece that I enjoy, the fact that I can do it bilaterally and still, you know, keep my elbows tucked and, you know, stay in my lower lat. So on days, you know, that we're trying to, you know, minimize the, minimize the unilateral exercises and subsequently the time of the workout, great piece. Next up is our Nautilus pull down. Um, these have become like unicorns or, you know, I don't know, whatever other mythical creature you prefer. I call it a unicorn, but unicorns in recent years, um, they've been very popularized due to the fact that they are pretty damn ergonomically perfect when it comes to uh, doing a lat focused, uh, lower lat focused pull down. The way the resistance is done is pretty perfect in terms of, you know, the drop off it has. It very much so is, you know, heavier when you're long and then drops off as you get it into the hole like you want. And then, um, yeah, just very, very well made, very ergonomically correct machine. Really enjoy having this one in the gym and uh, everyone that comes enjoys it too. If you have an opportunity to get one of these, get one. Uh, even if you end up not liking it, which is not a possibility, you'll be able to turn around and sell it for what you bought it for, if not more. Last up on this row before we head to the leg section is gonna be this Life Fitness 4 stack. Um, was super, super specific when we got to the gym about finding this, this 4 stack. Um, they also make an eight stack version, but the cool thing about this one is I got the part of it that I wanted and that is the one with the unilateral pull downs and then the unilateral rows. Um, in addition to having, you know, like the adjustable cable side and then the tricep push down station, but really wanted the unilateral uh, row and the unilateral pull down, uh, very versatile to have. Um, can do the laterals off of the row, you know, all the upper back movements or the unilateral lat stuff off of the, uh, the pull down side of things. And then, you know, having this is great. Um, kickbacks, blah, 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 whatever you want to use it for. Just a nice open cable station with a lot of space around it to do things. All right, make our way to the leg section, but on the way there, stop and, uh, hit a couple more. 
Obviously, if y'all have watched me train at all on YouTube, you have seen the workout cart. What started out as a joke stemming from the, uh, the video and photo people like leaving a bunch of shit strewn about the gym after they did a shoot uh, turned into like one of the more convenient things I found in my training. So I adopted the cart. It's become the holder of all things, you know, training. We have you know, pull out drawer with chalk and ammonia all of the wraps and straps and support shit we use, pens, calculator, extra shoes, Glock, whatever, whatever you need. Just got this in not too long ago. This is actually gonna go back with all of the leg stuff. I've been like out of town or gone or traveling every off day for like two weeks now. So first off day that I'm in town for, I'm gonna come up here and play Django with the gym equipment. But got yeah, Nautilus glute drive here. And honestly, one of my favorite pieces of gym equipment that I've ever used, Prime Prodigy Rack. So if I had to say what this is closest to, I'd say it's like a Bowflex made for IFBB pros. The amount of versatility it has, especially with all the attachments, because you know, back here, and I'm not gonna get it all out, but it actually comes with safety stops, J cups, and, um, a seat to be able to do lap pull downs and then foot stops to be able to do rows with. So if you have all the attachments, there is literally like, it's like literally having a power rack, a set of cables, and then a lap pull down a row and several other pieces all built in. We have a dip attachment for it too. But uh, one of the really cool things about this is it actually gets heavy enough for big people. So these stacks, the top guys, are actually uh, four to one, not four, two to one, two to one resistance. So if you come down here, it's like almost 600 pounds if I'm not mistaken, but yeah. So I weigh, what I weigh in this. So I weigh almost 300 pounds right now. So stacks actually get heavy enough to use this for whatever you want. So shout out to Prime for making an awesome piece. I really enjoy training on this. I've trained on it every day for two years now. And anytime I have to travel um, and use cables other than that, I always miss my prime rack. So shout out to Prime. This is a Strive Curl. Um, this is one of the very few pieces that I prefer the Strive design to the prime designs. You know, I'm a big proponent when you're training your biceps, literally all you need to do is a preacher based movement and then a, you know, step forward cable curl or a incline dumbbell movement. Something that's really stressing the length and portion. So, you know, this checks the box perfectly for that preacher, preacher movement and then alternate those with dumbbell preacher and then you have pain free elbows and big biceps. Adductor and abductor machine, pretty self explanatory. These ones are from Life Fitness. Um, love the machines in terms of the, you know, range of motion, the path, the ergonomics, what have you. That being said, they are not heavy enough. Um, you know, the adductor will have like two plates gym pinned to it. So if you're watching this looking for uh, gym equipment recommendations, I wouldn't recommend the Life Fitness adductor just because it does get heavy enough. All right, favorite part of the gym, leg, leg stuff. So let me turn the lights on for us. These are my two favorite calf machines made. Um, if you've been living under a rock, I guess I need to tell you this, but I have pretty decent calves. Um, I really do feel like this piece has made a big difference for that because I've been training on, you know, this one, not this one specifically, but this model for quite a long time now. This is a calf raise. My college gym had two, so. Um, why do I love this calf raise? A, it's got put it at an angle, so it automatically kind of makes your hips go forward, but B, the pad in front is long enough to where you can actually really drive your hips in and stack everything the way that you want it to and isolate your calves really well. And the stack actually gets heavy enough to not have to jump in a shit ton of weight to it. Next up, seated Cybex calf. Um, have those 25 stuck under there just to get a little bit more range of motion while using the 45s because um, you know to have that pad set where I want it uh, you know at the very bottom if you really stretch you sometimes you tickle the ground with the 45s so got a little bit more range motion with the 25s I know someone would ask why they're there um, really really old but solid hyper extension bench couldn't tell you who makes it this one's actually uh, 
from the old office and the old gym. So this one's been in our possession since I've been probably like eight years old. So this is a pretty, pretty old piece of equipment that we've owned for a really long time. Um, coming down the line, have our pit shark. We didn't get the full cage one. I wasn't gonna be doing dips or pull-ups with it. But that being said, I think it's an awesome piece to have for you know lower body. Um, people with disc issues obviously puts no pressure on your spine. It loads around the hips. But you know, in addition to that, you can do really good RDLs on it, really good deadlifts. We can lunge on it, you know, single leg stuff. You can row on it. So very versatile piece. Um, you know, if you keep up with me and the people around me, you've seen Jordan's been doing these for a while now. This is his setup. He'll do the wedges uh, on there, really bias the quad, and you know, really good look and feel to it. I've done these in the past, so might have to come back to him eventually. This is going to be the inverse curl from Atlantis. Same general motion as a Nordic curl, but unless you are among the select few that have, you know, the posterior chain that can do, you know, strict formed Nordic curls, it's a great piece to have. You're able to take some weight off and really keep strict form, you know, hips forward, really keeping everything in the hams and glutes. I enjoy this exercise a lot. I think it's a great post-chain developer. I did a lot more of these when I was playing football than when I bodybuilded, though. I think it's a great piece for athletes. Good uh, bulletproofer for the posterior chain. This is gonna be the Life Fitness Seated Leg Curl. This is by far my favorite seated leg curl. Um, Joe Bennett is actually the one that, you know, put me on this one originally. It's his favorite, too. Um, you know, combination of things, you know, it's adjustable range of motion, the adjustable foot pad, everything's solid. It doesn't lend itself to being bent or skewed easily. The stack gets super duper heavy. Uh, this is fully adjustable and how you want it. And the padding is just really nice and rigid. It really was a well thought out, thought out machine. And at the end of the day, I really do think that having a quality seated hamstring curl is important because I believe it's the king of isolation exercises for your hamstrings. I've probably done like 80% of my isolation work on a seated hamstring curl since I got started. After the seated, we have our lying. Um, lying's from Prime. Really, really enjoy having this piece, you know, for the same reason I enjoy all the Prime's pieces. A, it's ergonomically correct, but B, really allows us to overload certain portions of the exercise. So. On the day that I do my lying hamstring curls, it's the day that I'm also doing, you know, an RDL slash deadlift. So getting a ton of resistance in that lengthened position, but not a ton in the shortened, shortened position. So we're able to, you know, really hammer the shortened position here before we go and deadlift at the end. Last up, as far as isolation leg stuff goes, is gonna be our prime leg extension. It stays very, very smooth and correct when you have it loaded. You know, in my experience, if you have a pin select leg extension, you know, to get it loaded to the point where it's gonna cause failure at, you know, 15 to 20, it's, you know, A, you have weight pinned to it, or B, it's still just a little wonky feeling because it is, you know, cable loaded. This one's plate loaded. Um, obviously, there's other plate loaded leg extensions, but my experience is they're very hit or miss in terms of the resistance profile. So this kind of checks all the boxes in terms of being stable with load, but really allowing you to tailor the load. So this is the other rack that we have in the gym, Elite FTS rack. So this one's definitely set up to be squat in. It's got the monolith attachment, everything you need to do to have a good squat session. We have you know, all of our prime wedges, like I said, the Cambridge bar and the specialty bars that we have, they're all from Elite FTS, but we do have Texas Squat Bar too. Moving on to some compound machines. Have the Nautilus uh, hack squat. Have two hack squats here. We got one from Nautilus, one is the uh, Arsenal one that you've seen a lot of gyms have. Really enjoy both of these hack squats. Why do we have two? Um, this one fits little people a little better and you know, like I said, we do have quite a few girl athletes training out of here as well as the employees and you know, people's kids and whatnot. So wanted to have, you know, something for everyone in terms of a hack squat. I've been training on this guy for probably almost five years now, not this one specifically, but you know, the Arsenal hack. For those of you that don't know, it's like the original Nebula design, which 
some of the best leg equipment ever made, both the plate loaded and pin select stuff. So working with a great design and then obviously the guys at Arsenal did a great job putting it together. I feel like more and more gyms are starting to get a pendulum and most of them are from Arsenal and for good reason. You know, they make a great pendulum. I haven't been penduling them a lot lately. Got to the point where we had it loaded to the point where it was getting a little scary. So we switched that out for a different exercise, but really enjoy this machine. If I had to make any suggestions, if Brad's watching my video, that'd be awesome. Where are you, Andrew? Um, I'd love to see this get a, uh, you know, a base on tracks, you know, really be able to, change where the foot placement is and then also i'd love to see it you know braced from the other side or made with thicker steel or something so whenever it's really loaded out there's no that to it because there is some to it right now last two pieces and then we're we're done uh rogers uh pendulum hip press it's a really cool piece it's not a leg press at all if you've used it you know exactly what i mean by that um, it arcs and then because of the fact that it arcs and where this is there is a very steep significant You know resistance curve to it, which is you know what we're after for legs It's the reason that you see me band or reverse band a lot of exercises is you know You really are so much stronger at the top of the exercise mechanically, so this accounts for it um, You know the ergonomics of the machine are awesome the farther up you have the seat the harder the exercise is gonna be why is that because whenever you press it out to an extension, the full lockout, don't full lockout, like you know what I mean though, like you have it pressed out, the weight is gonna be farther away from the point of pivot. If you have the seat back to where like literally at full lockout, you can barely unrack it, you'll see that weight as you come through the range of motion, it will get almost underneath it and there will be a huge drop off to it. So play around with the seat positioning, the closer you have that seat to the platform at the start, the harder it will be. If you have this piece and you're curious, we always go on number seven. Last up, Arsenal uh, Leg Press. They make two versions. They make the bilateral version and then they make the unilateral version. Um, I'm a huge fan of the unilateral, like the solid plate. Uh, there's zero wiggle or play to it. It's very solid. Um, once again, based off of a Nebula patent, that original 45 degree leg press that they did. So this has actually been the compound that I've had in on my leg day for like the last two months now. I've been doing, you know, banded higher rep leg presses. Now that I've been droning on for God knows how long about all the equipment, hopefully y'all enjoyed that. It is time for me to slam pre. Uh, pre being 400 grams of rice now we just bump my food again so 400 grams of rice and 170 grams of chicken uh whole food pre-workout and i'm gonna let that digest and then today is back and hams so gonna be doing all the normal back stuff and then seated no not seated i already said it lying hamstring curls and then deadlifts at the end so you know today is a big high output day it's all of the uh all of the stuff I need. I need a thicker back. I need better posterior chain. So, you know, today is one of those do or day, do or day, do or die days for me. Um, or at least I very much so treat them as such. So, you know, stringing them together right now for sure, though, having a lot of fun in the gym for the first time in a while. And I feel like that's definitely reflecting, reflecting in the physique. So, yeah, see you on the kitchen. That's a lot of race. You might have to blend it. Yeah. Yeah. Hunter, I can't believe how hard people go on that. Yeah, man. Blend it. They're, yeah. What does it blend? 400 grams of rice is a lot of rice. Yeah. You're right, the chicken ratio is uh It is. Truffle. Truffle everything. Right now, that's the flavor. Tour of the gym. It's time to handle business for the day. Um, today, like I said, is gonna be the back and hamstring day. So normalish back session structure from the standpoint that it's a you know vertical pull, lower lat focus into a lower lat focus row, into an upper back pull down, then finishing with an upper back uh, row variation, then do lying and then deadlifts at the end. So um, this day is new for me from the standpoint of like this training cycle if you will, but you know we've been running it for two or three months now. So really been enjoying having 
you know, deadlifts back in. Um, I've done a very good job, and something I want to talk about like when we're doing them, but I've done a very good job of not getting married to the exercise or emotionally attached to it. Um, in the past, it was one of those, oh yeah, deadlift, ah! and you know, constantly trying to put weight on the bar, constantly trying to lift more, and obviously that's what we want to do, but you know, the form suffered from it, so very much so staying not emotionally attached to it. I'm just treating like every other exercise that I do, and that is, you know, progressively overloading it, but with perfect reps, so looking forward to showing y'all what it looks like. But first off, you know, we're just starting up with the warm-up that we've been doing for a while now um, on both the pressing days and the pulling days. And that is, you know, it's really waking the shoulders up. You saw me just kind of protracting, retracting, doing circles both ways, just kind of getting the shoulder blades and everything moving. And then, you know, once we do that, we're actually doing two sets of, you know, shout out to Nick Bagley for these pro series athlete, but basically like face pulls into external rotation very much so mimicking the motion of a rear dub uh, rear double bicep so um, puts a lot of blood in all the smaller muscles shoulders traps and everything like that gets my shoulders warm and if you know me i have pretty pretty fragile shoulders at this point so really been enjoying starting with these and makes the rest of the workout feel a lot better and my shoulders have been healthier than they have been in a while Strings today too and deadlifting at the end. Um, you know, like I said, I'm only doing four movements for back today. We'll do three working sets here for the lat pull down. And then uh, the next three exercises being a unilateral row on the prime, a rack chin, and then a uh, magnum row. We'll do two working sets each on those. Um, the second set on the rack chins will be a uh, rest pause and then the second set on the magnum will be a rest drop so um, nine total sets for back today two of them being you know intensity technique using sets so not a lot but you know whenever you do it the way you're supposed to it doesn't take Tip for all y'all out there that both do a lot of unilateral exercises and train with a training partner. During the warm up, touch, feeler, whatever the hell you want to call them, sets, you'll saw both of us were doing both sides. Now that we've started our working sets, I'll do one arm, he'll do one arm, then we'll go to the other side. What that allows you to do is have those, you know, 90 seconds to two minutes in between each working set, even though it's only one side, it does make a huge difference. Um, especially, you know, in my experience with rowing and stuff, you know, replenishing that oxygen deficit caused by, you know, a really hard set. If you're going immediately afterwards, the second side's gonna suffer for sure. So that's the thought process behind it. I mixed something that was blue raspberry flavored with something that was sour gummy bear flavored. So we have like blue and green coming together to make this wonderful shit brown color. <laughs> Tastes way better than it looks, I swear. <sighs> Whoa, gnarly. Just touching on the point that I made, you'll see 
Now that we've started the working sets, you'll settle into a nice little rhythm doing one than the other. It's very much like one of those, okay, I finally caught my fucking breath right as I get done spotting him, and then it's, it's, time, it's time to go again. So it keeps a nice set pace. The world is mine. Focus on the bag, I'ma get it for show. Who the real is, yes, yeah, me, I know. Really that you ever seen before. Wasn't easy, had to dream before. Get your head in the game, let's go. <laughs> Unilateral pull down, whether you're doing it on the Nautilus setup like we do, or if you're doing it just on a cable like you see me doing my other day, or like people have to do if they don't have that Nautilus machine. All that we're really trying to do is get as much stretch in our lat as we can while keeping it engaged. You know, there's a time and a place for full protraction, full retraction. That'll happen when we do our upper back row, but we really much are trying to keep that tension and all of that load through the lower lat as much as possible. So we're thinking about wringing the arm out, keeping the humerus externally rotated, keeping everything in a line, wrist, elbow, shoulder, and really pulling that elbow to our hip pocket, trying to get full lat contraction each rep. So like I said, three working sets there. That's the vertical lower lat focus pull down, moving right into the horizontal lower lat focus row. Let's go. Nobody no more. Dedication, that's all I know. Running up, it's time to blow. Put on the show. I'm too good. They wouldn't even try if they could. Get to the top. I knew that I would. They didn't. Hand one. I was just waiting. Didn't want to get in y'all's video. No, you're good. You're, you're in it too late. Oh shit! You are all up in it. Y'all are seeing one of my favorite parts of getting to train here, and that is my wife and daughter were just here messing around. Liv trained, obviously. Brooklyn did gymnastics. Lee popped out from his office, said hey while we were training, and now my youngest brother just got off work and he's about to hit his workout while we finish up ours. So I say this a lot, but. Very blessed to do what I love with the people that I love for a living. See, this is gonna look like the world's biggest hand vagina by the time I get done training today. This thing is gonna be a crater by the end. It'll be talking. Yeah, even to, it'll be talking to us by the end of the day. Use the belted squat belt. This is probably my last time running reactions because by the time I have this variation of my back training again, that beautiful. Mega Mass Leverage Row that we trailed with earlier today will be here. So that will take the place of these for sure. Same exact movement pattern, just a lot more locked in and precise and progressible than these. So the way I talked about them, I made it sound like I don't like these. I actually really like rack chins. Um, if I were gonna be doing them for a longer length of time, I'd probably hang a D handle off the bar with a daisy chain, just so there's a little bit of, bit of a play. Um, not really a big fan of doing fixed implements and bilaterally, your elbows and shoulders aren't meant to stay in rigid planes of motion like that, especially for us more heavily hypertrophied individuals. It's a really fancy way of saying us fat fucks. But anyways, like I said, really excited to have that leverage right next time we do these, but you know, like I said, these are great. Yeah. The day after I got back from Jordan, so obviously like flying, dehydrated, didn't eat a lot during travel times because I don't need to eat when I'm just sitting there. Yeah. I weighed 273 fasted. This morning I was 281 and a half fasted. So oh, we're back to three, where three, we three days later, back to where we left off at. Oh, we needed to fill her back up a little bit. Really? Like the longer I do this, and the less neurotic I become about things like that, the better I look and feel. Um, like really and truly, like you're bodybuilding properly and you have been bodybuilding properly for a length of time. You know, going on a trip for five days, six days, even a week. You know, if you can train, cool. If you can't train, hit your protein and then like cut your carbs in half. You're not gonna lose muscle. You're gonna feel refreshed. You might lose like a little bit of fullness just from your like stat to the gills glycogen loaded wise, but you will feel better and you will make a jump in progress when you come back. I'm not saying go take a week vacation all the time, but you know, him and I had been running our heads into the wall for 
four months straight. So, you know, six days of, you know, slightly pulling back on the food and slightly pulling back on the training is just like a slingshot to shoot forward. So. It used to be only really hard sets of calves that I could cause like such a bad burn. Like when I get done, like all I can do is like fucking stomp around in circles and shake myself out for a second. But Uh, definitely whooped. Um, right now, uh, Jordan's coached by Ben as well, and right now we both have in a uh, refeed on today, so we're actually, you know, doing our post workout, and then we actually get to go get a burger and French fries, which is, you know, training couldn't be going better right now. Um, firing on all cylinders. Um, one of those things very much so I see the progress and it's making me dig even deeper and harder. Um, it's another thing to be doing this, going through the motions and, you know, not liking it. And to be honest with you, I had been there and done that a lot last year. Um, I'm sure some of y'all saw it, but you know, I am really having fun when I step foot in the gym right now. And, you know, the sessions reflect that and my physique reflects it right now. Um, you know, definitely into uncharted territory in terms of size. Um, especially at this condition, um, I'm, like I said, I really feel like my waist is tighter than it was at the Olympia, and I'm smack dab middle of my off season right now. So, headed in the right direction on all fronts. You know, appetite's good. Training couldn't be going better. You know, relatively healthy. You know, little nicks and dings here and there. But that's to be expected when you're pushing things, but nothing that's keeping me from missing sessions or making me alter sessions. And yeah, moral of the story is though, having fun doing this right now, and it's it's reflected in it for sure. Without further ado, see y'all next time. Thanks for.